All right. All right. Welcome back to the podcast. This is podcast episode number 196. I say that as though you guys like aren't new here. So if you're new here, first of all, welcome. For the rest of you, welcome back to another podcast episode. Um, you know, I love recording the podcast. Just total side note. I love showing up every week when we started this podcast. Gosh, it has been almost four years now. I wasn't sure. I did it because I had a business um, consultant tell me that I probably should. I don't know if they perhaps recognized in me the gift of gab, but, and I was like, okay, well, let me do the things that I should, you know, you know, you know, when somebody tells you what you should do. And, um, and I've come to absolutely love it. So thank you. Thank you for showing up and listening. Thank you for every one of you who has gone to leave a review or just forwarded this to your, you know, your sister-in-law, your BFF, your kiddo, whatever. I appreciate you. Uh, we are talking today. Hang on. Well, I clear my throat. <clears> throat> There you go, because that's a professional. We're going to be talking about overthinking today, which, um, you know, at times I perhaps struggle with, um, but I feel like I'm kind of a reformed overthinker. I feel like there have definitely been seasons when I have found myself just rehashing the same thing over and over and overthinking decisions and feeling paralyzed and stuck. And, um, and I've really, you know, done a decent job of getting myself out of some of those seasons. And I want to share with you some things today that if you're an overthinker, and first of all, if you're listening and you're like, girl, I don't overthink anything. Okay. Listen, are you somebody that like rehashes conversations in your mind after they're done? And you think, oh my goodness, I bet when I said that, she thought I meant that. And I wonder if I should call her or text her and said that when I said that, I didn't really mean that. Like, do you do that? Do you relive your mistakes over and over? Um, Do you replay things in your mind over and over? Do you try to figure out every possible scenario that if you were to do this, then, you know, A, B, and C could happen. That is completely overthinking, my friends. And so we're going to talk about that today. But real quick, I am going to just read a fast review from Ashley Fay Designs, who says, Jennifer, I just love you and what you stand for. I feel so grateful and blessed to have found your podcast. I love that you bring faith into business. and I've been listening to God in my own business. It's taken me so far. I've grown my business so much. And part of it is because of your podcast and your inner circle. So Ashley Faye, thank you for taking the time to just leave that review on iTunes. I appreciate you so much. And I just pray a blessing over you and your design business. I pray that everything that you set your hand to, um, that God would just multiply it and that you would feel his deep, deep joy over you in Jesus name. So when I was thinking about like overthinking, because I think that there are some people that would make the case for the fact that overthinking isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it actually is so counterproductive to especially what we need to be doing in business. Um, When you overthink things, you really like ignore your intuition. And I say that not in a weird, like woo woo, new agey type of way, but I'm talking about like, whenever, if you ever hear me say intuition, like, first of all, I think we have, you know, mother's intuition, but it's always Holy Spirit. It's always God. So let's just, let's just put that out there. So there's nobody that's like, whoa, 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 what are you talking about intuition? I mean it in a godly way. But when you're overthinking, like you ignore that, you ignore the promptings of the Holy Spirit, you ignore that gut feeling. Um, Overthinking will really cause you to lose a lot of joy. It's a joy sucker. It's a joy sucker upper. That's what it is. Overthinking is because it's hard to be full of like peace and love and joy and all those things when your mind just won't shut off because it keeps going through different situations and and scenarios and all of the things. Um, Overthinking is definitely something that interrupts sleep. Anybody had a hard time sleeping this year? Yes, I think sometimes, you know, and I've done a podcast on this if you want to go find it. Um, I think sometimes we have trouble sleeping because, you know, the Lord maybe wakes us in the middle of the night to pray and intercede and be watching on the wall for certain things. I think other times our sleep gets totally interrupted because our mind just won't shut off. And and if your mind won't shut off, it's the majority of the time it's because you're overthinking. Um, I think that overthinking completely can mess with your self-esteem and um, and it keeps you stuck. Because when you're overthinking, you are paralyzed. You just like picture, you know, you're just standing in quicksand. And if you're somebody that's in business, like you can't have periods of overthinking for very long or your business will kind of spiral. It really will. I think overthinking can lead um, to depression. I think it can lead to other things that you perhaps need to seek, you know, more professional help on. And, And I've been around overthinkers. And let me just tell you, they aren't any fun. 
<laughs> they aren't any fun to be around. And so, you know, overthinking, it doesn't just affect you. I talk in Fear Is Not the Boss of You in my book about how if you're stuck and a lot of people who are overthinkers, they are stuck. Like it, you are robbing the people closest to you of the fullest, best version of you. Because when you're stuck, when you're overthinking, it affects your spouse. If you have one, it affects your, it affects your children. If you have them, it affects your community. It affects your business because you can't give to others in your fullest capacity when you are completely stuck. If you um, if you look at somebody's business who has grown exponentially or their level of influence has grown exponentially, or um, you can just see God's favor like on everything that they touch, I guarantee you they're not overthinkers. They just aren't because they're led not by like, going through every scenario and what could possibly happen if this happens, then this could happen and this, that's not what leads them. Like they, they have a hunch, they have a feeling, they have a gut reaction to something. They have an intuition. They have, uh, they understand the call of God on their life. They walk closely with the Holy spirit. Like those are the things that are directing them and not overthinking every decision. I guarantee you, if you're overthinking your business, you are staying small a hundred percent of the time. 100% of the time. If you are overthinking in your business, you'll have a really hard time growing because when you overthink it, um, you miss those windows of opportunity. Listen, I just did a podcast. If you go to Google, sometimes I have to Google my own podcast episodes, but if you Google Jennifer Allwood podcast, um, don't miss the window. You can listen to that. I think it was a Monday fire. Um, and it was really good. And it talks about how, uh, the Lord was showing me that there's a window of opportunity for a lot of people this year. There's still, there's still, um, as I'm recording this, we're in 2020 still, um, but there's still a window of opportunity open and don't miss the window. Overthinking will cause you to miss the window. It won't only cause you to miss the window, but suddenly the window is shut and it's cocked shut for winter. They've got plastic over it. Like my dad used to do in our home growing up. Gosh, I hated the winter. I just thought of that. Now I'm feeling triggered. (laughs) Dad used to, he used to be kind of crazy about like heating and cooling. What's really funny is that the house that we now live in, we bought from some people that owned a heating and cooling company. Hilarious. But yeah, so dad would, you know, cock things shut and, and, and put extra weather stripping and plastic over windows. And I grew up in Iowa where it was like, you know, negative bajillion degrees in the winter. So it was cold friends. It was cold. But the other thing that overthinking in business will do is it'll cause you to be super frustrated and frustrated business owners don't make good decisions. They just don't, you know, you, cause you, you end up making decisions based on feeling, um, you know, and our feelings are often, you know, going to lead us in the wrong direction. I say all the time to my coaching clients, I feel like eating raw chocolate chip cookie dough, like right now, like I can't trust my own feelings because my feelings they're not always accurate. Sometimes your feelings are liars. And so if you are overthinking things, it's making you feel frustrated. And when you're frustrated and you, and you're feeling super frustrated, you will not make the best decision. So, um, so there's two reasons that we start to overthink. So if this is you, if you're like, okay, (laughs) check, check and check again, then let me talk to you about the two reasons that we overthink things the most. And if you're watching this on YouTube right now, I'm so sorry that half of my manicure is missing. Yep. You can see it right there. All righty. It's fine. Um, okay. Two reasons we overthink. Number one, fear of the future. Number one is fear of the future. You are overthinking your business because you're scared of the what if, what if I start this business and it fails? What if I try to build this business and it goes down the tubes? What if I hire my first person and I end up hating her? What if, um, I start a business and I don't understand taxes, which by the way, you're not gonna newsflash. God did not wire you to know all of the things about all of the things there are going to be like, why don't not for the life of me understand why some business owners feel like they are lesser than when they don't understand every component of business. You were not meant to, you were not meant to understand every single thing. If you're an entrepreneur, you were meant to get help girl, get some help. So many people overthink the future. They are terrified of making a wrong decision. So what we will do, okay, so here, here's what happens, all right, is we will think to, to ourselves, because this is, because our brain, like God gave us fear to help us to not get eaten by bears and to help us not fall off of a cliff. And, um, you know, he gave us fear to sometimes keep us in the cave so that we, so we don't end up like hurting ourselves when there's danger, when there's danger. And so fear isn't always a bad thing. Okay. But here's what happens in our brain. 
um, we start getting fearful about the future as business owners. So we start trying to convince ourselves that, well, what I can do, this is what your brain starts saying almost to itself, like what I can do. And by the way, I'm not a brain person, not a doctor here, but I just know enough about how humans work <laughs> to try to walk you through this. Okay. So our brain starts thinking of all the ways it can like protect us. Like I'll help you, Jen, I'll help you. So that this business, if you do this, like, uh, you know, we're not going to die because of it. And, um, so our brain starts trying to help us think of like every worst case scenario and a plan for it and a plan for it because our brain's job sometimes is to protect us. And so we end up going down into these slippery slopes of like, well, if I have a plan B, C, and D for every possible scenario of everything that could possibly go wrong, like now I've got everything covered and we don't even recognize the fact that we've just overthought the thing to death. We've just overthought to death because we're just scared of the what ifs. So we're scared of the future. We think that if we have thought of everything from every angle that were covered. But the truth is, I promise you, after living for 49 years on this earth, I can tell you there's always an angle you don't think of. <laughs> there's a, there is always an angle that you don't think of. So while we think that overthinking could be, you know, helpful in making sure we have a plan X in case anything goes down, like I promise you there's, a, there's something that Y that can happen that you didn't even think of. That you, so... Fear of the future is one reason why we completely overthink. Another reason why we completely overthink is because we're tied up still in our past. And, um, and sometimes we, you know, we like to live in the past. We, uh, sometimes we suffer from like the what if syndrome and we sit and we replay things over and over and, and we think about what if I hadn't done that? Or what if I had done that? Or I should have done this, or I shouldn't have done that. And we think that because we had some things in our past that we, um, that were mistakes, maybe that we were responsible for even, we think, well, if I think this new thing through enough, then that won't repeat itself. In addition, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and just go with me, but if, um, if you're a person who has gone through trauma, you will have a tendency sometimes, perhaps maybe kind of sort of yes, to be an overthinker. Because sometimes um, we can have a traumatic experience that we feel like we um, are this much, just a smidgen responsible for. And so even as grownups in business, we can be triggered by remembering um, trauma that we went through maybe when we were young and we think to ourselves, okay, all right, well, I don't want to feel that way again. So if I, you know, if I, if I don't do this and that won't happen, or if I do do this and this, and we end up like just in this spiral, friends, it's a spiral. I'm telling you, it's a spiral. But I, I honestly believe that overthinking comes from either fear of the future or just rehashing the past. And so if you're an overthinker, what can you do? Like, number one, let me just say this. If you need to get counseling or a therapist or something much deeper than a podcast from Jennifer Allwood, like, please do that, okay? Please do that. I have, you know, seen a Christian counselor now for six-ish years, I think, and um, on occasion just have to go in for a tune-up. I mean, you know, it doesn't even have to mean that you're in crisis mode. Sometimes we just need, we just need a tune-up. You take your car and to get tuned up, right? Like, why not make sure that you are getting your heart and your soul and your mind tuned up? And listen, if you're a believer, please don't be messing around with new, any new agey type of counseling therapy. Like get your butt in the chair with someone who believes in the Bible and who's going to do some counseling um, and counsel you as they filter it through biblical truth. Okay. Okay. We've got that established. So number one, that's what you can do if you need to. Number two, I'm going to tell you one of the best things that I think you can do um, if you are somebody who overthinks things, just start making decisions. Just start making decisions. I want to tell you about a podcast I did. It was Monday Fire episode number 29. So those are the short little like kind of more biblical um, teachings that I do every Monday. And Monday Fire number 29 is, um, is all about closing the loops. The Lord showed me one time that um, I start feeling super like um, just almost fidget, fidgety, like unsettled. I, I, I feel like my peace is gone 
when I have what I call open loops in your brain. Now, listen, I don't know if I've heard of that concept of open loops somewhere. And if so, like, I'm so glad you put a term to it. Or if I dream this up in my brain, I don't know, couldn't tell you. Um, that's not what we're here to talk about. But I remember coming to Jason a couple years ago, and I literally sat down at the table and I said to him, I have a bunch of open loops that I need to close. And he's like, come again. <laughs> Like I got a bunch of open loops. Like I have all these question marks in my head. Like, should we go, you know, this is back when we used to travel. Should we go on a family vacation this year? Or should we wait till Christmas? Like I had one of those things. Um, should we have friends over, you know, on Saturday night or should we not? Um, I, I still hadn't decided on like, you know, the name for my book or there was, there was like five or six things that were just undecided upon all open in my brain, open tabs in my mind, open loops. And I told him, I got, I got to get some help on closing some of this because it's making me feel crazy. And because I had so many open question marks in my brain at one time, I just, I, I just felt like I was like overthinking every single thing and stuck because I had all these like question marks in my brain. And so I just needed him to help me walk through those, those things real quick. Each of those things, should we go on, on vacation? Yes or no? Like, let's just make a decision about each of these things real quick. Not that the decision has to be set in stone forever and ever and ever, amen, but just to get some sense of like, uh, you know, completion on it today, just to get some sense of like, okay, we've decided. Making decisions, if you are an overthinker, is going to be crucial to you getting out of overthinking. Sometimes we don't make decisions because we A, don't trust ourselves and we B, don't trust our savior. And we don't trust that if we're a knucklehead and make a wrong decision, that God can't back the bus up and redirect us to the decision we were supposed to make in the first place. Or we think if I make the decision, then God's going to be like hands off and like, well, you should have known better, sweetie. And that's not the God we serve. If you struggle with decision making, I want you to really dig deep on why. There are very few things on this side of heaven that are permanent. I'm constantly telling the women in my coaching group things like, the name of your business, you're stuck at the very beginning on the name of your business. You're overthinking it. You can't even start the business because you've been thinking about the name for six months. And this is going to keep you small. Like there's very few things on the side of heaven that are permanent. You can redo, undo, change, shift, shorten, hyphenate the name of your business later on. But for right now, like make a decision and go because the overthinking of it is keeping you stuck at level one. So some of you are still at like Jumanji level one because you just, you're, you're overthinking things too much. Make some decisions today. In fact, here's what I want you to do because I like to hold your feet to the fire sometimes. Some of you need to just, you need to make a decision on something in your business today. You need to either decide on the name or the URL of your website, or you need to decide on the brand logo and go. You've been looking at the same three options for six weeks. Nobody cares about your logo. I love you, but pick and go. I want you to send me a DM on Instagram on what it is you need to decide today. And I want you to let me know if you're going to do it. And I want you to let me know when you did do it. Because I think that we need to hold ourselves accountable to start making some decisions. And sometimes I think it could be even just a stranger on the internet that's like, sis, I don't know you, but I love you enough to tell you this. You're getting nothing done overthinking. You're getting nothing. You're going nowhere with that business. Still overthinking the things at the very beginning. I got a DM from a woman today, precious woman, precious woman on Instagram. And she said, I haven't started my business yet. She sells a physical product. Um, and, and I mean, she started enough to like sell a couple. Okay. Um, but she said, I haven't really put it out there because I'm so afraid I'm going to get so many orders that I can't keep up. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like what? <laughs> so you're not, you're not like doing your business because you're afraid of your business, like exploding and doing well. Like, do you hear how crazy that is? It's crazy. You're overthinking what could happen if this is super successful. Well, what will happen if you starve to death? Some of you have families. Sis, listen to me. Listen to me, okay? And I say this not in a way to like shame you or put pressure on you, but just to like take you by the shoulders and shake you in the way that a good, good friend would. Some of you have family members that they need for your business to get off the stinking ground because the uh, financial abundance that 
potentially could happen could change their life too. Like they, they don't even know that they're waiting for you to get your stuff off the ground, but it's you getting your stuff off the ground and actually getting some sales where you're like, actually got some money coming in where you're like, you know what? I can gift this to you. I can help you with that. Let me cover this for you. Like that is the kind of things that there's people around you that need. It's never just about us. We're overthinking things, but we have all these people who need for us to make the decisions that are going to affect their lives too. I pretty much just summed up some chapter of Fear is Not the Boss of You. One of the chapters in my book, I don't remember which one. I hope somebody heard that. Make some decisions today. You know what else making a decision, if you're an overthinker, will do? It will help you prove to yourself that you may overthink, but you are not an overthinker. Like there's totally a difference. I'm super sensitive to words. So there's times when my kids lie, but I don't call them a liar. They may lie, but I don't call them a liar. I'm not, I'm not labeling them as that. So if you, and so uh, forgive me for actually even talking about you being an overthinker, this whole thing. Because maybe you have been an overthinker or you are currently overthinking, but I want you to start making some decisions today just to like prove to yourself that, you know what, that is not me. I am not an overthinker. I am fully capable of making some decisions. I fully trust that God has is, is got this. He's got me, even if I'm a knucklehead, like, you know what, we're all going to make it. And so make a decision today. Come find me on the Instagrams. Let me know that that's you. Um, last thing you can do if you tend to be an overthinker is that you, um, this, <laughs> this is not the stuff you're going to find. <laughs> uh, three ways to stop overthinking. This is not the way, this is not more the tips you're going to find than anybody else's list. Okay. Um, number three, I need you to realize you have so little control over things anyway. If you can just wrap your head around that friend, it'll free you. It'll free you. We overthink because we want control. And the truth of it is you can can try to control all the things and you're still going to have a kiddo that makes a knuckleheaded decision. You can overthink all the things and you're still going to have clients that are upset with you. You can overthink all the things and still do something wrong on your taxes. You can overthink all the things and still lose a friendship. You can think that you've overthought everything and you've arranged everything in such a way that you're, you know, that there will be no issues, but I, I'm here to tell you friends, because I love you. You have so little control over all of the things you have control over you. And that's about it. And that's about it. And when you finally get to this point where you're like, okay, I have so little control over things. I, I really do. When you get to that point and you realize I can only control my own emotions and my own reaction to things, um, it will help you in not feeling like you have to overthink everything. It really will. A lot of people who struggle with um, overthinking, they have serious trust issues. And a lot of those, you know, can be related back to trauma even. Trust issues will often make us overthink future decisions. Okay, so I hope that those three things helped. If you're somebody who's overthinking things today, honey, get help if you need to, for real. Find somebody that can help you. Find somebody who can help you. If you're in my coaching group, you know that I've shared with you um, the name and the number of the woman that I do um, my counseling through. Number two, Make some sort of a decision today, anything. Make a decision on something. Accomplish something. It'll prove to yourself that you can actually do hard things. And sometimes we just need to give ourselves some evidence. We are evidence seekers. We really are. Like if you think that your kiddo is up to no good, you'll be seeking evidence to support that. Am I right? If you think that they're doing something they shouldn't be, girl, they're ha heaven hath no fury or hell hath no fury of that of a woman who thinks her kids are up to no good on Instagram. <laughs> Because I will find out. You will seek evidence. Give yourself the evidence of I am fully capable of making decisions and not continuing to overthink them. Make some decision today and then let me know you did. And you know what? I am currently in day three of a challenge I'm running this week. It's called the Next Level Challenge. And I'm doing the challenge for any woman who's trying to go to the next level in her business this year. But in particular, those of you who in 2021 want to hit six figures. I want to help a group of women hit six figures for the first time in 2021. And so I've got a challenge going on right now. It's $10. 
go to jenniferallwood.com slash next level. You can go back and watch the, the recording from Monday. You can watch the recording from Tuesday. If you're a person of prayer, please upgrade to the war room ticket because I'm praying for entrepreneurs in there. But even just making a decision like that, a $10 decision, it has a way of like putting this line in the sand. It has a way of, of putting something out into the spiritual realm of, you know what, this time I'm serious. No, I, I actually can do this. It's like putting your money where your mouth is. Some of you just need to make a decision on something today. Make a decision to get in my challenge. It's Wednesday. Who cares? We've still got Thursday and Friday, baby. You can watch the recordings. I'll see you inside. And the last thing is just finally come into the realization that you have so little control over things on this side of heaven. Honestly, you, you don't. And when you realize how little control you have, I think it can be really helpful in making you realize that, okay, all the overthinking in the world isn't going to help. Instead, it's just going to make me spin my wheels and exhaust me and frustrate me and not be a lot of fun to be around. So friends, I hope that that was helpful for you today. I hope that if you are overthinking your business, that this perhaps was just um, a shoulder shaking of such to help you see some things from a different perspective and to get you in motion. God can work with things that are in motion, with women who are making decisions. It's impossible to try to like alter a decision if you won't even make a decision. If you're just in that, in that spinning spot where you're just overthinking everything, like it's very, very difficult, I think, for God probably to come in and like redirect that. You know what I'm saying? And so if you're an overthinker, listen, so much grace to you, so much love to you. I have gone through those seasons, but I promise you it's helping you not. If you need to get unstuck so that your business can, you know, stop being small, so that it can grow, so you can feel less frustrated, so you can make an impact, you know, on your own checkbook, on your community, all the things, do what you need to do. Just quit overthinking things. And I hope I'll see you in the challenge yet today. JenniferAllwood.com slash next level. I'll see you there. Okay, friends, until next time, be blessed. Bye-bye.